This video, we're going to show you the processes that we go through when repairing servo motors. We're going to follow the life of the repair of this servo motor, which is a Siemens 1FT6044 type, as it goes through all stages from diagnosis, repair, and then final test before shipping back to our customer. Servo motors are complex pieces of equipment, which are basically an electric motor with a feedback device. As we have three-phase stator windings within the motor, we need to carry out basic static electrical tests first, these being insulation resistance tests and resistance comparison tests before we further the repair. All information is put into our job system for reference. This servo motor has an internal brake. The next test we'll carry out is to see if the brake does release and then the rotor is able to turn. As you can see on this motor, the brake does release and the rotor is able to turn freely. The next test that Steve will carry out will be an encoder count test and alignment test. The feedback device for this motor, which is a resolver, has been coupled up to our test rig. We use proprietary software and look at the angle and count test. Uh, we can see the vector level is showing an error here and also the angle is not constant. So straight away we have found that there's a fault with the resolver which will need to be investigated further and probably replaced. The previous test that we did found that there was a problem with the feedback device on the servo motor. Now that we're happy we've found the problem, it's time to dismantle the motor, check all the parts and start the repair process. As you can see, the servo motor has now been stripped down into component parts. A number of things will happen here. Firstly, we'll take the end shields. You can see there's elements of corrosion on here as if there's uh, uh, water or fluid has been around the motor. We will clean these up and we'll measure the bearing housings on our coordinate measuring machine. This is the brake to the motor. We know that this operated satisfactorily, so we'll strip the brake down, just confirm electrical tests and give it a overhaul. We know the uh, resolver was faulty from the count test that we carried out. This is a Tyco type resolver. We'll replace this with one from stock. Now the rotor, magnetic rotor, everything seems to be okay with that. We will check the bearing fits on the coordinate measuring machine as well and also check the motor run out to make sure this, the shaft isn't bent. And what we'll do as well, we'll refurbish the uh, brake disc. Now the stator. We can see that there's been corrosion on the rear end for the stator. We'll clean this up as well and also we've got the motor windings in there. We know we were okay with uh, the insulation resistance to earth. But what we need to check too, we need to surge test this winding and also carry out the high potential test to make sure everything is fine with the windings itself. What we'll do next, we'll go to each stage, we'll show you what we carry out, the repairs and the process that we carry out here before we come back to building the servo motor and for carrying out the test. Now when servo motors are repaired, it's easy to forget that they're still an electric motor. As such, have a three-phase winding built into the stator. To ensure reliable operation, we need to check the integrity of the stator windings. And what we're doing here is carrying out a surge to surge comparison test on the windings. What we're looking for is turn to turn shorts between phases. Once this test has been carried out and we're happy with there's no the state of the windings, will then carry out a high potential test to earth. This will ensure the entire insulation system is correct, the windings are okay and fit to go back into service. A critical part of all servo motor repairs is measuring the fits on the bearing housings and bearing journals. After all, over 50% of failure related to any rotating machine is the bearings. What we're doing here is carrying out a eight point measurement on the top and bottom of the bearing housings. This will ensure that the bearing fit is correct and if any remedial work needs to be carried out, we know about it now. The rotor will also be measured for the bearing journals and also for the straightness of the shaft using the coordinate measuring machine. You can see on the screen here where all the measurements have been taken and everything with this rotor is fine, in a straight, the run out is negligible or within tolerance which will be 0.05 millimetres for this motor. 
All measurements have now been taken for the servo motor and what we have found is the drive end end frame, the bearing housing there, is oversized. Now I'd just like to explain what it means when we say the bearing housing is oversized. It's where the bearing sits in this housing here, there's a tolerance and the upper tolerance for this bearing housing is 47.014 millimetres. We've measured this and it is 47.030 millimetres, which is 0.016 millimetres, 16 microns. It doesn't sound a great deal. However, when the bearing sits in there, it will be loose. The motor will work, but over time, the bearing's going to spin in the housing and create further problems. We like to get repairs right first time, so the measurement is done correctly, sleeving will be carried out, and we know the fits are correct. Here we have the drive end end shield set up in our lathe. What we'll do now is machine the bearing housing, shrink fit a sleeve in, and then machine to size. We will then make sure the size is correct by performing the measurements carried out in the CMM again before this end shield can be passed back to the servo department for fitting to the motor. This servo motor rotor is now on our balancing machine. Even though there was no report of any imbalance, we always like to check to make sure that we've got the right balance grade. And we always work to grade G1.0. That is usually one balance grade higher than the manufacturer's standard balance grade. So here, the machine, what it's looking for, is looking for imbalance in two planes, hence dual plane dynamic balancing. What will happen from there, the readout will tell whether we need to add or remove weights from any of the planes. This will ensure greater reliability and reduce vibration when the motor is operating. After the first test run, what we can see here from the printout from the uh, balancing machine is that we're requiring almost half a gram at 21 degrees. The engineer will now add that weight and we'll take out another run so we see which balance grade we've achieved. The balancing process has now been complete for this uh, rotor. To achieve G1.0 balance grade, we have a permissible imbalance of 0.2 grams. What we can see on this one, we have on the left plane 0.18 grams, and on the right plane 0.13 grams, which means that rotor is within G1.0 balance grade. We can now take this rotor around to be built up. All the parts for this Siemens servo motor have now been overhauled. So we're in a position now to assemble the motor. And just to recap what we've done to this point. The uh, motor windings have been resistance checked, insulation resistance checked, high potential tested and surge tested. So we know they're all good. We've also varnished the windings as well, so they'll last. The end shields have been checked and this is the drive end shield where we had to remachine. We've uh, shrunk fit a sleeve in here and we've machined to size and we've checked the size on the CMM machine so we know it's the right tolerance for the bearing. The rotor itself has been checked, it is straight, the bearing journal is the right size and the brake disc has been skimmed so we know that's now true. The brake has been overhauled, we've dismantled the brake, we've cleaned everything, we've tested the coil so that's good. What we'll do now is fit two new bearings to the rotor, we'll assemble the motor We've got a new resolver here which will fit and align. We'll then fit the all important shaft seal, assemble the motor complete, perform a light test first of all before we perform a full load test on our load test run. The brake has now been located on the rotor shaft and now it's time to correctly fit the bearing. We use a cold pressing method with a fly press for this size bearing and the sleeve will push down over the inner race of the bearing and then locate against the bearing shoulder. We'll fit the drive end bearing now, again using the same cold pressing method with the fitments on the inner race of the bearing to press down to against the shoulder. Once we're happy with this, we'll then remove the rotor and we'll build the motor up ready for testing. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see the Siemens server motor has now been assembled what we'll do now is set the resolver alignment and the process that will follow to do this is to lock the rotor phases by applying a DC voltage between two of the phases and then moving the resolver stator until we get a zero degree position on our software. The software position here is now showing a zero angle degrees. We can also see that the VEX level for this, mo for this resolver has now been corrected by putting a new resolver in. And once we're happy with this, we'll do a few revolutions to make sure everything is correct. We're getting the right angle, we're getting the right voltage amplitude out, and then we'll set the drive together with the motor and perform the load test. We're now in a position to start the final testing of this motor. The first test that we carry out, now we've put the serve motor on our load test rig, is the brake test. We've removed the safety guard for this test, just to show the coupling moving at later points. But this motor has a holding brake, and we know this holding brake should be good for five newton meters. So our load motor built into the test rig is now trying to drive back this motor at five newton meters. As you can probably see, the coupling is holding still, so we know this servo motor, the brake is working as it should do. Here is the control center for our servo load rig. In the bottom right hand corner on the orange display, we're showing the torque on the brake at the moment. We know it's holding at five newton meters, but what we want to do is show the breakaway torque to make sure the motor is operating correctly. We're now putting six newton meters of load on the brake. It is still holding seven newton meters. And we've now found the breakaway torque for this brake is around about seven and a half newton meters way over specification for what it needs to be. So we're happy that that test has been carried out successfully. We're now performing the first test on the motor, which is a uh, no load test to check for the motor operation. As you can see, the motor is rotating the coupling and into our test rig. The drive system we use for Siemens servo motors is the S120 Synamics range. This will give us the ability to test all Siemens range of servo motors. The Siemens drive is operating the motor and here's the control centre on the laptop. The pictorial shows the motor operating. We are running at 3000 RPM. The motor is currently giving an output power of 0.22 kilowatts, which is 0.63 newton meters. And the motor temperature currently is 24.6 degrees C. What we'll do now is apply a load on the motor shaft, a dynamic load, to ensure the motor can handle and give the power required. This is our servo motor load test control station. We've designed it such that the operations can be carried out by a touchscreen controller. At the moment, we're showing no load on the motor shaft, and this motor can deliver 4.2 newton meters of power. So we'll set now to 4.2 newton meters at the shaft, and then we'll take a look at all the readings, electrical, motor, and power readings from the unit. We will let this motor run for about one hour to ensure correct operation. The motor has now been running under full power for an hour. We're still running at 3000 RPM. The motor is delivering 1.3 kilowatts of active power at 4.2 newton meters load as per the nameplate. And we have a temperature of just under 55 degrees C. If there was any faults with this motor, it wouldn't run on the Siemens drive and the software would pick it up. This proves that our repairs match the manufacturer's standard specifications for the motor and repairs are reliable. This motor has now been fully tested and it meets Siemens specifications. What we're going to carry out now is a vibration analysis test to ensure subsynchronous rotational, twice rotational frequencies and also bearing defect frequencies are checked, ensuring that this motor is mechanically sound as well as electrically sound before we send it back to our customer. Well. Here it is, this is the Siemens servo motor. It's been repaired, it's been fully tested. This one has been painted black as per our customer's requests and it can now be shipped back to the customer. We always put 12 months warranty on any servo motor repair that we carry out and that's the same warranty you get from the manufacturer. So this is back to new condition. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it informative. 
And if there's anything else you'd like to see or know about our serve motor repairs, please call us on 01782 411 021, 24 hours a day, every day of the week. Thank you.